Good morning. I'm Ethan Allen, your host here on FinTech Tech Talks. Filling in for uh, CEO Jay Fidel, who usually does this. And with me today on FinTech Studio is my co-host, Ray Starling. Ray. Glad to be here with you. Uh, sorry that uh, Jay had to run off to the uh, dentist, I think. Uh, so we uh, got tapped. So. <laughs> but this is a great subject today. I think we've got uh, some really interesting stuff we're going to talk about. So. True, and we, we have with us today in the studio Dr. Hans Kroc, who is a leading authority in ocean thermal energy conversion, right? Yes, uh, and uh, thank you for having me on. I think it's a uh, very uh, appropriate subject right now because uh, we do have an energy crisis and uh, a global one, as Absolutely. a matter of fact, and uh, I'm suggesting there is an, a, a global solution uh, centered uh, in the tropical ocean and uh, Hawaii can be the world leader on this and is in fact uh, 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 the place where most of the research has been done and uh, so we're prepared uh, from a technical point of view uh, to go forward uh, the thing that's holding us up basically is politics and uh, decision-making processes and so that's, that's where we are. But I wanted to sort of bring out uh, the state of affairs uh, uh, of where we are. Wonderful. So, so this is, we're talking something pretty big here. I and mean, this is not just a small local way to produce energy. This is, has a lot of implications for solving large-scale world problems, potentially. Um, yes, and that, that is the uh, viewpoint that uh, we've had for some time, and in fact, the uh, Natural Energy Laboratory on, on the Big Island of Hawaii was formed specifically to develop this technology. Oh. And uh, it was formed uh, more than 30 years ago and has uh, come to the point of, uh, of uh, putting uh, 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 the uh, technology on, uh, on the point of commercialism. And that's what I'd like to uh, bring out uh, and, and uh, indicate that this is the um, largest energy resource on Earth, larger than all of the fossil fuel together uh, uh, and larger than any other renewable energy resource. In fact, it's the base for the other uh, en renewable energy resources. The ocean is the world's largest solar collector. Right. And uh, there it is. It uh, makes all of our weather, all hurricanes, all rain, all cyclones here and there, and all common wind comes from the heat of the ocean uh, as it's collected from the sun. Right. So, and this, this technology uh, was developed a long time ago. It was first thought of in 1881 uh, in, in France um, uh, and uh, was practically uh, built in the 1920s in, in Cuba huh. by a French engineer. And uh, so uh, it's not that it's unknown. In fact, it's not even very difficult. It's uh, relatively simple. It's a heat engine. Uh, which takes advantage of the surface warmth in the tropical ocean and uh, uh, allows that um, heat energy to flow to a cold place. This is generally how heat engines work. They go from warm to cold. And the cold is the deeper water in a tropical ocean, which is accessible at a relatively small distance uh, of uh, say one kilometer um, and uh, 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 there you have it. You have a difference in temperature I within the uh, technical capability of humans uh, whereas uh, the weather engine so to speak runs uh, in a difference in temperature between the surface of the water and, you know, a thousand miles away and, uh, uh, horizontally in, in the atmosphere, you know, so, but it works. And uh, uh, so could, could there it is. I, I, I've been excited about this since I first came to Hawaii back in 1980 hmm. and actually flew over the, I guess, the very first OTEC plant here in Hawaii, mm -hmm. there off uh, Kona Airport. 
mm -hmm. and uh, and and saw at nighttime a couple of light bulbs burning out there, mm -hmm. and that was all it was doing. It was it was showing that it mm -hmm. could make even at nighttime, so you don't need the sun yes. to shine all the time in order for this uh, energy to be produced. That's right, because it takes stored energy. Stored it energy, okay. right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so it's, it's been around, it's been talked about, and, and the money has been put into it at, at various times. Mm -hmm. What are the major obstacles of uh, getting it to the point where we've commercialized it and we've recognized its benefits? Well, uh, we're at that point, uh, and uh, we, uh, 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 the problems are uh, political will and, uh, and uh, the uh, initial uh, project. Uh, you can't do a, say, household OTEC, you know, mm -hmm. you have to do it at some yeah. scale. Right. So, uh, so uh, we have uh, right now a very active project. Uh, uh, together with the Republic of the uh, Marshall Islands uh, to uh, supply uh, the uh, power and water uh, uh, for Kwajalein, uh, both the uh, U.S. military facility there and the, uh, and the population, uh, uh, the, the local population. So uh, that's where it is. It's poised, it's uh, designed on a preliminary uh, basis and it awaits a, uh, a power purchase agreement from the army. Okay. And uh, it's in front of them, and uh, there it is, you know. So uh, what, you how, how big would this plant be? Uh, that well, that one, as it's uh, planned right now, would be uh, 20 megawatts, okay. uh, because uh, uh, they don't have a, a big uh, uh, demand over there. Right. Uh, but uh, the basic structure that we're, we're using uh, is big enough to go to 40 megawatts, right. um, uh, that particular one. And uh, uh, the uh, uh, first one would supply uh, power uh, to the U.S. base uh, on the basis of the, this uh, uh, power purchase agreement and would also supply power to the uh, local population and the fresh water for that. Mm -hmm. In addition, it would, uh, it would produce a certain amount of hydrogen mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this would be done in conjunction uh, with the uh, Japanese uh, who are anxious, of course, to develop a hydrogen uh, uh, power production system for Japan. In fact, they already have uh, 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 installed a, uh, a uh, land-based uh, power uh, station uh, using, uh, using uh, fuel cells for 100 megawatts. So what, all they need is the hydrogen. Mm -hmm. And of course, right now, as an experimental system, they're just using the hydrogen from fossil fuel, but that's not a, that's not a sustainable uh, uh, approach. So they want uh, um, hydrogen from uh, renewable sources, and they are already talking uh, to the Marshall Islands, uh, because uh, if you recall, the Marshall Islands are a sovereign nation, so they can make their own deals, right. so to speak, with uh, foreign countries. And uh, the Marshall Islands, the main um, mover and shaker, uh, is uh, the, uh, the uh, former, uh, Foreign Secretary Tony de Bruyne, who's globally um, uh, honored already for his uh, his stance uh, in in um, uh, backing uh, technologies that would help out his country, uh, uh, because they are of course subject to. Uh, the bad effects of global warming with rising sure. sea levels they are primarily they are all on atolls over there mm -hmm. and uh, so he's he's a very able and smart person who's uh, uh, attended and was a big mover in the Paris uh, meeting uh, and uh, uh, so this is a project that he is pushing very strongly yeah. And particularly because this produces fresh water as a side uh, sort of sideline, yes. 
that would have great appeal to people in Marshall Islands where yes. fresh water sure. is a chronic issue, yeah. right? Yes. Uh, yeah. And, perfect, perfect sighting. and as soon as you make fresh water and you make electricity, you can make hydrogen uh -huh, right. because you stick the electricity in the fresh water <laughs> and out comes hydrogen on one electrode yeah, exactly. and oxygen out of the other. So, uh, and you get oxygen whether you like it or not, <laughs> so you might as well collect that as a product sure. uh, also. So I, I see the picture you've got here. Um, can, can you yeah. just hold it up just so? Yeah, I think okay, there it is. Yeah. Okay. That, um, that looks like something that can move around, and and is. is is that the sort of your I guess it is your first uh, effort to try to make a commercial plant? Uh, M yes. Might this eventually be on land, or is is it is it better oh, done it, it, on it, a it large is, like yes, device? Yes, uh, uh, we, we have had uh, since I like I said uh, since the nineteen twenties. Uh, the French and various uh, people have had uh, 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 such uh, plants, and they work because it's, it's very simple. They've been proven to work. And the, the thing that has failed each time is the cold water pipe. And of course, anybody can uh, see that if you put something on land, uh, you have to have a longer pipe to get to deep water. But if you're floating out on the ocean, right. then it's a real short distance straight because you can go yeah. straight down. Right. And so, uh, uh, so uh, you're limited uh, on land because you can only make such a big pipe to uh, to go get uh, 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 cold water. Since you, this is this is uh, relatively um, uh, limited heat engine because you're dealing with a relatively small temperature difference right. in the ocean. It's big enough to run the world's weather, right. uh, but uh, in, in human terms, it's, it's, a, it's a small delta T, as we say, you right. know, definite difference well, in temperature. So you That's just need the, more, more water. Yeah, so you need a lot of water. A lot of water. So you need a big pipe. And, and uh, so uh, you, uh, you have easier access if you're floating. And this plant that we just had on, on the picture there <laughs> is, is a design that my partner, Alfred Yee, and I uh, uh, have come up with. This is a, a design for 125 megawatts. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's uh, 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 a set of modules. So our design calls for not one big pipe, but uh, several modules, each one of which okay. have their own pipe. Okay. And so it's within the technology Good. range that we can handle right now. And, and we're so going to explore this further, but I'm told that we have to take a brief break at this point. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, but uh, mm -hmm. we'll be right back. Uh, you're here on Think Tech Tech Talks. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, Ray Starling, Dr. Hans Kroc. <laughs> Hey, Stanley Energy Man here. Make sure you tune in on my lunch hour every Friday from noon until 1230 at least. Maybe I'll go a little long if you got good stuff to, to share with you. But we'll talk about energy, all kinds of energy. My favorite is hydrogen, and my favorite, other favorite is transportation and hydrogen. But we'll talk about all kinds of energy. Be with us every Friday at noon, Stanley Energy Man. Aloha. Hello and aloha. My name is Raya Salter and I am the host of Power Up Hawaii, where Hawaii comes together to figure out how we're going to work towards a clean and renewable energy future. We have exciting conversations with all kinds of stakeholders, everyone who needs to come together to talk about renewable energy, be they engineers, advocates, lawyers, utility executives, musicians or artists, to see how we can come together to make a renewable future. Tuesdays at 1 p.m. We're back. I talk. And here we are. We're back on Think Tech, Think Tech, Tech Talks. Uh, I'm Ethan Allen, sitting in for Jay Fidel. With me is Ray Starling here uh, from the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum and Dr. Hans Kroc. And we are talking about OTEP, Ocean Thermal Energy Conversion. This is an amazing technology that potentially hits a lot of things. It produces very cleanly, produces a lot of energy, produces fresh water, produces hydrogen and basically actually counters global warming. Mm -hmm. So, stunning. So, tell us more about it. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's uh, here, here's uh, the entire Earth's en uh, energy flux. 
and you can see at the bottom fossil fuels and, you, uh, and human energy consumption is 0.005% of, of that. And uh, fossil fuel is, of course, uh, a, a buried sunshine in the form mm -hmm. of uh, plants that have been uh, fossilized. But uh, I wanted to show this because uh, the entire world uh, 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 energy is rather large and most of it, if you look through there, is to heat production and almost all of that is in the ocean. And then you get the hydrologic cycle, evaporation, precipitation, and then you get wind, waves, ocean currents, which amounts to 1.9% of, of that total and biomass production, which is the entire living sphere, which is 0.1%. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're saying, hey, go back to that big chunk <laughs> over there, you know, the heat production. That's where the, the, the thing is. And we're not going to run out. Right. It's too big. Okay, the next slide, please. Here is uh, where you have enough, uh, here's when, uh, where you have enough heat to do this in the surface layer, and that's a tropical zone. So all the areas in uh, uh, yellow and, and uh, orange, uh, there are places where you can do this as long as you have the uh, depth profile mm -hmm. to get to the cold water because there's cold water everywhere and uh, only a thin layer of warm water on the top. So you, you have the makings of a, a heat engine over here. So next slide also shows that uh, part of the weather thing. This is where all of the, this shows where all the hurricanes are. And you'll notice that there's a strip down the middle around wow, the equator yeah, the that, where they have no hurricanes. But, that? and so you can, uh, you can uh, put all of the OTEC plants there and not uh, huh. be subject to hurricane problems. And it's the hurricanes that take advantage, uh, the, the sort of the exclamation point of all of the uh, power that's in this system. So, uh, for instance, one Category 5 hurricane in one day uh, does as much power as uh, all of humankind mm -hmm. does in a year. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so and you have multiple hurricanes every year, right. and, uh, and after a hurricane passes, you measure the temperature in the, in the surface layer and it's only one degree less than it was before the hurricane and that's made up very quickly by the sun in the next couple of days. So here's, here's the actual delta T and you get the biggest delta T of 24 degrees in that big patch yeah. in the Pacific Ocean. But uh, that, uh, so we want to go there first. Mm -hmm and the Marshall Islands are there, uh, and so are many of the other uh, islands that we're talking to. So next, uh, so here we have, you saw initially that uh, you can have uh, 125 megawatt uh, plants, and these are five of them put together so they can float out there. Mm -hmm. They can make uh, hydrogen. You, uh, you can then have a, uh, there's an open end on the bottom there. You can then drive your liquid hydrogen tanker in the middle of that, be in calm water, mm -hmm. and uh, load it up uh, and, uh, and go. So the, this would be then uh, actually, depending on the delta T, either uh, 500 or, uh, or uh, six, uh, what is it, five, one, two, three, four, five, or uh, 625 uh, megawatts mm -hmm. worth of power. Or the next slide, which is another configuration with six and oriented uh, into the wind or the current mm -hmm. so that uh, you, can, you can have dynamic positioning here. You can have uh, a hydrogen tanker. You can also at the same time have a oxygen tanker, sure. uh, mm -hmm. and you don't want to mix the two, <laughs> but because <laughs> so, it'll blow up, you know, but, uh, but separately, they're, they're of course, uh, uh, very tractable, and we, our technology has this already. We have tankers, and we, we uh, use uh, liquid hydrogen, we use liquid oxygen already, right. you know, uh, so uh, it, it's not new technology. So next slide, please. I wanted to show that we have firm technology for the, uh, for the plant. It's made out of concrete, 
This is wow. designed and built by Al Yi. This particular thing was built uh, uh, more than 30 years ago. It's the most uh, 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 um, cost-effective um, uh, way to deal with the floating structures. It's made out of concrete, high-strength concrete. Uh, the thing that's built there was built uh, to explore oil in the Arctic Ocean, so it, uh, it served that purpose for the U.S., so all of the Arctic uh, oil was uh, explored uh, using yeah. this platform. And, uh, and, and then, uh, after a while, it was uh, uh, rented to the Russians. The Russians are now using it. It is their oh, really? most attractive really? <laughs> uh, 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 constructive oil platform. And uh, this, is, uh, this is the uh, key part here. It has never been dry docked. It has no repair requirements. It, uh, it, it has paid for itself many times over because it originally cost $75 million and it was rented out for $45 million a year wow. for 20 years. Wow. So that's a pretty good uh, uh, return. So it's the best technology. Mm. So this is what we would use this technology for our platform. So next slide, please. So we have the 125 megawatt, the 60, whatever size you want to make uh, reasonably large because this technology works best large rather than small. So next slide, please. And this is the one for the 20 megawatt for uh, uh, Kwajalein. Oh, Kwajalein. Yeah, so uh, uh, off Kwajalein. And this is the top deck. And, uh, and uh, next slide, please. This is uh, the, uh, the top deck uh, s uh, symbolic, the next slide. This is inside. Now the key to, uh, to th this is very simple technology. You basically have uh, two streams of water, the, the warm water and the cold water, and you use heat exchangers to, uh, to transfer the heat from the water to a working fluid. And, uh, and the working fluid goes through a turbine and then uh, gets uh, cooled off by the cold water to be liquid again, you know. Uh, so, uh, uh, and then you discharge it and, and that's it. That's right. the entire technology. Right. So it's technology we know how to do. Sure. And of course, uh, that's it. You have to buy a whole lot of heat exchangers and whatnot. So next slide, please. And the technology for making hydrogen is here. You can buy it off the shelf. This happens to be a, 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 a alkaline uh, a, a electrolysis yeah. cell, which makes the hydrogen and the oxygen. Yeah. And the most efficient uh, uh, fuel cell is this same thing, except running backwards. Yeah. A same electrolysis cell so that you put hydrogen in one end and oxygen in the other end and electricity comes out. And so you just run the same cell backwards and you have it. But of course, you design it for optimizing one or the other, but uh, technically it's the same thing. So next slide, please. And the heat exchangers, which is the most expensive part of the thing, are off the shelf. Or you can develop new heat exchangers like uh, the uh, 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 the Mackay Ocean Engineering is, is doing uh, in Kona. They're experimenting on heat exchanges. So next uh, slide, please. Uh, the other alternatives is that last one was an American uh, design. This one is Japanese. It's a little more compact. Uh, we haven't decided yet which, which way to go because uh, we're actually dealing with the Japanese more than the Americans uh, uh, in, in Kwajalein, so we may go that direction. So next slide, please. I think that may be all. Yep. Yeah, okay. So I would rather quick step wow. through this thing, but it, it, that didn't cover uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the other main benefit, and that is that uh, uh, the, uh, the backing off from our, uh, uh, from our cooking ourselves with global warming with, uh, with fossil fuels. Um, the fossil fuels, uh, are burnt, of course, putting carbon dioxide into the air. And uh, uh, what that does is uh, um, retard the outflow of energy uh, from the, uh, the Earth so that, in effect, you put a blanket over the Earth 
the energy is still coming in with no problem, but it goes out a lot slower, so it accumulates. That's global warming. It's accumulation because we're putting a damper on the outflow of energy. So it's accumulated. It, it's mostly in the ocean. And so uh, uh, if we take the blanket off, it'll, it'll, it'll reverse, you know. So, uh, so what this technology does, first of all, is take part of that energy out of the surface of the ocean. Right, exactly. So, uh, you know, unlike, for instance, um, uh, photovoltaic uh, or, uh, or wind, it doesn't take any energy out of the ocean. You know, uh, or nuclear, for instance, uh, nuclear puts energy back in the ocean. So you're, you're taking the heat energy right. and yeah. turning it into electricity. Uh, useful yep. something, right. you know. Yes. So uh, 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 put that's a, a good taking that's, a problem. That's a good sales and point. Ma and <laughs> making a, a, a benefit out of it. Absolutely. So, so when people say, "Oh, uh, nuclear reverses uh, uh, global warming," it does in the sense that it replaces fossil fuel. This, this is does, it takes another future, step. Right. It not only replaces fossil fuel, it also takes heat out of uh, the, uh, the reservoir that's heating up too much. What? So uh, that's, that's two things. In addition, of course, it takes... Uh, and there's more. Oh, oh there he is. There. And for, uh, for another 1995, <laughs> yeah, uh, 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 it takes uh, the surface layer water which has absorbed some CO2 from the atmosphere right. because right now we're putting it more in the right. atmosphere and much of that goes into the ocean mm -hmm. right. and it creates problems there uh, because it, uh, it, uh, it causes a lower pH right. which uh, affects the, the, uh, the um, uh, uh, coral right. uh, because it dissolves the yeah. coral because yeah. of the lower pH. So we take some of that and, and basically take the heat out of it, which makes it more dense, and we put it back in the ocean, and not having changed the carbon dioxide in it, but then as we put it back in the ocean, it sinks it's because it's more yeah. dense. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a, a transport to, uh, to, uh, yeah. to yeah. and yeah. not yeah. only that, <laughs> but when we, t uh, the, the, the ocean right now, uh, as, especially the tropical ocean, it is, uh, it has been affected by this, this whole process of heating so that the surface layer is lighter than it was before, because uh, yeah, less right. dense, because you've heated it up and you heat right, something right, up and right. it, 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 it becomes less, less dense. Right. So it's floating in the, in, in the tropical ocean and it, it has a certain thickness and the thickness is defined by how much mixing energy there is because of the heating is actually in only the top few meters and so then uh, it uh, it doesn't mix as much so that surface layer is getting thinner right and and so this is addressing all these problems and I wish I wish we could go on <laughs> yes <laughs> okay at length with it and really do a full explanation and indeed I might talk to you about Where this in another moment do okay. you have a website that you could refer us to uh, yeah there's uh, there's a website uh, uh, as part of our company but it doesn't have all of these okay. things in there that's just me. Anyhow, <laughs> th thank you so much, Ray. It was a pleasure meeting you. Well, you are, I, I, very nice to be with you. I hope we'll, you'll come back and see uh, Think Tech Tech Talks uh, on every week. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, saying goodbye for now. <laughs>